Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today I'd like to talk to you about communication. And specifically, I wanted to share some phrases or comments that have been specifically made to me by a covert narcissist. And now it's time for a breakdown. <laughs> Hopefully in doing so, it'll help to heighten your awareness, right? That's what we wanna do. We wanna heighten that awareness and be able to spot these patterns of behavior, the way of, ways of communicating before we get in too far to where we've spent a lot of time, money, <laughs> resources, etc. And hopefully this helps you. And I would also encourage you to share any additional things that have been said to you by a covert narcissist in the comments below because you never know, it may help someone else. I compiled a list of a dozen phrases and I'm gonna read them to you if you don't mind. And I can't wait to hear yours, but let's begin. Let's dive in here. One is, you're so dramatic. And the Oscar goes to, <laughs> this was literally said to me verbatim. And in all honesty, is probably a, a jab at my acting experience. And just, I have an outgoing personality and sometimes I like to have fun with that. But <laughs> I literally was told this and I know that a lot of people have shared and it's, it's known that narcissists are notorious for accusing you of being so dramatic and I'm no exception. I too have, I've been there too. But I, I got n nominated for an Oscar in being accused of being dramatic. <laughs> anyway, another thing that I've been told by a covert narcissist is, I love hearing positive feedback from you. This is interesting because as you know, narcissists uh, don't take criticism very well. They're highly sensitive. Even the DSM-5 uh, lists hypersensitivity as a trait uh, of, for narcissists. And so the fact that I literally was told, I love hearing positive feedback from you. It's like, this is, this is part of that grooming. You know, I was being trained to provide more of that, more positive feedback, and to, to shower more praise, to pour on more praise, and adoration, and compliments, and things like that. And you know what? I'll be honest, I did. Another thing that I was told by a covert narcissist is, just thinning the herd, no leeches this year. And this was interesting because narcissists, they are leeches. <laughs> they literally will suck you dry of your time, attention, money, other resources that you're willing to offer them. They'll take what they can get from you. And they will do this with multiple sources of supply. So <laughs> the fact that, that the covert narcissists said, you know, thinning the herd, no leeches this year. In other words, I'm whittling down the sources of supply that I'm dealing with and, <laughs> and uh, the whole no leeches this year was kind of a way of throwing off the scent, right? A form of projection. Anyway, another thing that I was told by a covert narcissist is I can't tell you that. When you hear those words, that's a red flag. And if this isn't covert, I don't know what is. I can't tell you that. <laughs> covert narcissists are just that, covert. They are trying to fly under the radar. They're trying to uh, keep a low profile. They, they may be 
around, but they don't want to be known, like really known for who they are. And they try to keep a lot hidden. They like to keep withhold information so that you don't know who and what you're dealing with. So the I can't tell you that was actually said to me after I had engaged uh, the narcissist. And that's another thing that you need to be aware of is that you want to ask questions on the front end and know who you're dealing with because once you engage and you get to a certain point in the relationship and you try to get more information or inquire about the narcissist, they're gonna, they're not gonna give you anything or they're gonna give you very, very little. In this case, I can't tell you that. Another thing that I was told was, that's cool, that's cool. And the context of this was that narcissists are very greedy, right? They don't like to share. They want as much of your time and attention and resources as possible. And in this particular instance, I was diverting my attention, resources, time, energy, money towards someone else. And the narcissist knew this and didn't really like that because that was less time, attention, money, <laughs> resources, energy that was going towards them. And a narcissist can be very jealous as well. So if you're focused on something else, it could even be your family. <laughs> they aren't going to take too kindly to that. So the that's cool was kind of a way to diffuse and, and mask, again, covert, you know, mask the fact that they were really frustrated and, and seething and struggling over the fact that I was diverting my resources elsewhere and my attention was somewhat divided. Make sense? Another thing that I was told by a covert narcissist is I had to change my cell phone number, long story. And <laughs> this is interesting because, you know, we know that narcissists uh, narcissist will use uh, fake numbers, they'll use burner numbers, especially when it comes time to hoover you back into the relationship. But they also can change their numbers a lot. As people find out who and what they're dealing with and the narcissist starts to get exposed, they, one way that they can kind of keep undercover is by changing their number and cutting off the people who maybe have figured them out already. So something to be aware of. Something else that was said to me was, you know, he or she is crazy. And it's widely known that narcissists will project and call other people crazy. And at the end of the day, they know that they are wounded. They know that they are damaged. They know that they are dysregulated. They know that they have been hurt, that they've been uh, abused themselves and that they're depressed and have a lot of inner turmoil and struggles because of undealt with unhealed trauma. And narcissists will project their inner turmoil onto others. Like he's crazy, she's crazy, you're crazy. And I've witnessed that myself. Another thing that I was told by a covert narcissist is no new people. And <laughs> this is interesting because again, covert narcissists are going to try to really keep their, their game, you know, who they are under wraps. And so they may choose to cut people off, limit, limit their sources of supply as people start to maybe withhold supply or change on them, they will discard them, they will cut them off, or people, if they're afraid of some kind of retaliation, you know, they'll change their number, go into hiding, those kinds of things. And, or not invite any new people or not actively seek any new people 
to engage with. Maybe they, you know, are trying to focus on what they've got going on or um, just, again, want to stay hidden and keep things simple. You know, I think after a while it gets to be hard juggling all these people. You lose track of what lies you've told different people and, <laughs> you know, different people are figuring out the game and, and leaving and coming and going. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. But uh, no new people was something that was specifically said to me. And now I see, okay, I see how that, that was a flag. And another thing that was said to me was, I don't share my life like that. <laughs> Again, narcissists are going to want to find out all kinds of things about you and share as little as possible about themselves. They do not want to be known, at least not in a big way. I mean, unless they're more grandiose and they don't care. But if they're more covert, they're going to want to stay hidden because they don't want people to know who they are. They don't want people to figure them out. They want to keep more of a low profile so that they can just ex draw supply from their sources and keep it low key, fly under the radar. <laughs> so that kind of sums it up there. And, and they won't, they won't give any information. So if you don't know what, who and what you're dealing with and you try to come back and ask questions like, now, wait a minute, what, what's now, what was this about you or whatever? They're not going to tell you that especially if they've already got you hooked in. Another thing that I was told is, be honest, please, I can take it. And this was uh, in, this was uh, in an attempt to get feedback on something specific. And narcissists, as you know, are hypersensitive. They do not take well, uh, they don't take criticism very well at all. And so this is really ironic. And I'm sure I, I, I played nice uh, in the moment. And I really didn't have an opinion in the moment. So I really didn't have much to say. So I kind of politely shifted to something else because I really didn't have time or really want to take the time to dive into, you know, looking at whatever it was, but the the narcissist asked me to be honest and said I can take it. And that's really funny because I think if I had taken the time in the moment to provide con some constructive criticism or, or give feedback because, um, you know, because I had uh, expertise in that area, a critical eye and, or trained eye, I think that that could have been held against me, used against me later, or maybe even used as an excuse to blow up, get angry, whatever, go off. And I avoided that landmine, but this was really interesting. Another thing that I was told is, you're loyal, you adore me. <laughs> and as you know, narcissists are very selfish. They're all about themselves. They are trying to get as much attention, adoration, praise as they can possibly get. And in this case, the, nar the covert narcissist had been receiving that um, from myself and some other people too. And, you know, they felt compelled to say, to say so. You're loyal. You adore me. And it's like, it, that was part of the main objective was to have people fawning and paying attention and and providing resources and boosting their esteem and and there was it was a collaborative effort <laughs> I'll say that but narcissists will actually say these things like they'll actually let you know like oh you're loyal you adore me and I'm just happy like I'm just happy where I am like life's good like life's good for the narcissist as long as they're being praised, adored, fawned over, given things, showered, flowered, all of it. And another thing is, 
so-and-so made sure people hate me and that's cool because I can live my life undercover. That was literally said to me. So there are a few things going on here. One is a smear of a third party and so the so-and-so who made sure people hate, so-and-so made sure people hate me. And that's cool because denial that's cool because I can live my life undercover. Covert behavior. I can live my life undercover. Stay under the radar. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what kind of game I'm running. I can scam, con, manipulate, trick, deceive all day long, coming and going, get my needs met, get money, get attention, get praise, get opportunities, get access to people and different things that I may need or may be able to put to use in some other way. So that was kind of a lot, <laughs> kind of a loaded statement. And for the bonus, this will be good. One other thing that I was told by a covert narcissist is, quote, you're basically riding my coattails. Really? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> which is funny because the narcissist will put themselves in the middle of a situation and especially if it's uh, kind of a, a business opportunity or a collaborative type of thing, they will put themselves at the nucleus and they will be content to kick back and let everybody else do the work. And I'm sure that you've probably experienced that in some way, shape or form. It might've been in school for a school project where you had that one person in the group that just kind of didn't show up, didn't do anything and just kind of rode al was along for the ride while everybody else was doing all the research and uh, kicking out all the work and writing up the report and analysis or whatever and turning it in for an A and this person was kind of along for the ride to get an A. <laughs> but at any rate, yeah, I was literally told by a covert narcissist that I was riding their coattails, and uh, which was really ironic because <laughs> the the very uh, the very circumstances or the very uh, thing it was all future faking, and there there really wasn't anything there, and it was kind of it was just all fake, and so the idea that I would be riding their coattails was just ridiculous. But anyway, maybe you've experienced something similar. Those are 13 things that I have literally been told by a covert narcissist. And please share yours in the comments below. It can help someone else to heighten their awareness and maybe more easily identify uh, covert narcissism when they see it or when they cross paths with someone who is more covert. At any rate, narcissists will say the darndest things. And covert narcissists in particular uh, will be more subtle. They'll be more uh, low key, more demure, come across as maybe a, a, a humble helper or something like that. But they're, they're gonna hide their narcissism for as long and to the, you know, best of their abilities. And typically it doesn't last super long because uh, eventually it does come out. And this is another reason why it's so important to ask questions, to do your due diligence, to do your fact checking, to do your background checking up front so that you don't get sucked into something where, you know, by the time you figure out who and what you're dealing with, you're in deep, whether it's for your time, your attention, your money, or whatever other resources, energy. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.